falta lo demás. ¿Dónde está? No lo sé, señor. ¿Tú no has ido? No has ido, señor. ¿Quién ha sido? No lo sé, señor. Y voy a demostrar mi inocencia hasta el final. ¿Cómo? A través de mi defensa, a través de decir la verdad de los hechos. Le falta la huella de pilares. ¿Qué pasó? No lo sé, señor. No lo sé. Hey guys, it's Jackie. I hope you're all doing super, super well. So welcome to today's video. Okay, so today's case is just truly disturbing. This is a case about a woman named Blanca Arellano. She met a man online and fell in love with him. She thought this man was perfect and everything that she had dreamed of. But in reality, he was evil and would soon end her life. I don't understand why this man felt like he could take Blanca's life. It's disgusting and I do want to put a trigger warning because we are going to be discussing graphic details. Also, this is like a a complete side note but I'm gonna be getting a procedure done this week I have to go get a tooth implant which is not gonna be fun like I am not excited about this at all I hate going to the dentist and the idea of getting a screw put into my gums sounds horrible but it needs to be done so I'm probably gonna be out for like a week which I hate doing but this was like a very last minute procedure that had to be scheduled like tomorrow so it kind of just ruined my work schedule so I'm sorry if I'm a little bit MIA for the next like week week and a half I'll still be talking to you guys through the YouTube community tab through Instagram through TikTok through everything else so, so yeah wish me luck with that procedure other than that I think that's pretty much all I need to update you guys on let's just jump right in and let's talk about what happened to Blanca Blanca Olivia Arellano Gutierrez was born on February 6, 1971 in the area of Atizapan de Zaragoza in Mexico. And she had a very close relationship with her family, specifically with her sisters. One of her sisters named Alejandra is the one that has been doing a lot of interviews. She has been doing a lot of the protests and she has just been very vocal about speaking in regards to her sister's case. Anytime Alejandra speaks about her relationship with Blanca and about who Blanca was, it just warms your heart because she truly seemed like such a kind person. Even just looking at her photos, she just looks like your typical like tia you know like your typical aunt that's always there for you asking about how you're doing always trying to be helpful that's genuinely how blanca looks like and also how she was as for her career she studied tourism and hospitality that was going pretty well for her but then when the pandemic hit it was really hard for her to keep that job because as you guys know you know pretty much everything was shut down at that time people weren't booking tours in mexico so she actually had to quit that job and she started working as a taxi driver to make ends meet so she was now a taxi driver and of course this wasn't like her dream job. She really enjoyed doing the tourism but she just knew that this was something that she had to do in the meantime in order to you know keep paying her bills and just like keep everything going. Blanca was really into working out. She really enjoyed going to the gym with her family, going by herself with her friends and she also really enjoyed cycling. Honestly Blanca had like a lot of hobbies to be honest. Just hearing about how much she enjoyed doing different kinds of things honestly motivated me to get hobbies and do something other than just like watch YouTube videos and do makeup. So along with working out and cycling, she was really into video games. She was a part of a Facebook group that was dedicated to video games. This group was called Juegos Retro and it was a group where people would just like share their passion for different types of video games. So Blanca became a part of this group and she was super active in it. She was always posting stuff on the group page. She was commenting on other people's posts. She was watching other people's live streams and supporting them. She just really loved this community and she started to become close to, you know, other members of this group. She specifically became close to the administrator of the group, which was a 37-year-old man named Juan Pablo Jesús Villafuerte. Now, Juan was a medical student at the Universidad José Faustino Sánchez Carrión in Huacho, which is in Peru. Oh my God, that was like a tongue twister to say. So he lived in Peru and Blanca lived in Mexico. Juan did have an identical twin brother, so in order to like differentiate them, Juan had a tattoo that as soon as everyone Everybody saw they would know that that was him and that it wasn't his twin brother. So he had a twin brother and he also had an older brother. On top of that, he had been married once before but got divorced in 2016. So they were no longer together but they did have two children. I wasn't able to find details or not if he was active in his children's lives or if he like did see them or if he didn't see them or like what really happened with that. There's not a lot of information about Juan's background. All we know is that he had a twin brother, an older brother, an ex-wife, and two children. 
children. So Juan and Blanca started to get very close. When it was Juan's birthday, Blanca would send him a birthday message. When it was Blanca's birthday, Juan actually sang her a song on his guitar. He actually would often send her videos of him singing and playing his guitar. Anytime Juan would live stream, Blanca would be there as well to show him support. So the two of them got so close that he eventually made Blanca an administrator of the group as well. About a few months into speaking to each other online in this Facebook group, they formalized their relationship and were pretty much just virtually dating. They dated this way for about a year. And after a year, they decided that it was time for them to finally meet in person. According to Blanca's sister, in January of 2022, Juan had told Blanca that he was going to go fly to Mexico to meet her in person for the first time. Blanca was so excited about this. You know, she was excited for him to come to her country, to meet her family, meet her people, meet her world. So this was going to be an amazing trip. However, the plans actually fell through. Juan was no longer able to visit Blanca in January. And of course, she was heartbroken about this because she was so excited to finally meet her boyfriend in person. So instead of just like waiting around to see when Juan would be able to come meet her, she decided that in July of 2022, she was going to travel to Peru to meet Juan. As I mentioned earlier, Juan lived in Huacho, which is a beach town, and Blanca absolutely loved the beach. She just loved the water. She loved the view. So she was excited to get there and, you know, meet the love of her life in this beautiful beach town. Now, this is going to be an expensive trip. I mean, traveling from Mexico to Peru is definitely a journey and in order to afford this trip she ended up selling her car she sold her bike she sold some art pieces that she had and she even sold some of her blankets and some of her comforters and you know just like other random pieces of her belongings just to be able to afford this trip to Peru her family says that she sold all of the stuff because she genuinely wanted to make a life in Peru with her boyfriend Juan so it honestly seems like she was basically going to move there it wasn't just going to be like a quick trip to meet him like she was ready to give everything up and go be with this man that she thought was the love of her life. Now, when Blanca told her family that she was selling all of her stuff and she was getting ready to, you know, make this big move, of course they were shocked. They didn't want Blanca to move so far away and they wanted her to stay in Mexico and, you know, stay close to the family. They also didn't feel that great about her dropping everything to go be with this man that she had never met. But at the same time, Blanca is an adult. You know, at this point, she's 51 years old, so she's definitely old enough to make her own decisions and I'm sure no matter what the family would have told her Blanca had this plan you know set in her head and pretty much nothing was gonna stop her from going so the family wasn't too excited but at the same time you know there was nothing that they could do however they did tell Blanca you know please text us when you get there text us when you meet him text us when you get to his house like just keep us in constant communication that we know that everything is okay and that you're actually happy there Blanca agreed to this and on July 28th 2020 2022, she packed up all of her belongings and headed to the airport in Mexico City to begin this new journey. Her family went with her to the airport. They all said goodbye to each other, gave each other hugs and kisses, and Blanca told her family that she would message them when she arrived to Lima, Peru. Now, she was first going to travel to Lima, Peru to meet Juan, and then from there, they were going to go to travel to a couple of other places in Peru until finally going to Huacho, which is where he lived at the time. So, Blanca gets on the plane and and 3,000 miles later, Blanca was finally in Lima and was finally meeting her boyfriend Juan for the first time in person. As soon as she landed, she contacted her family to let them know that everything was okay, that her flight was good, and that she arrived safely, and that she was finally with Juan. With this message, the family kind of felt like a sigh of relief because they were like, okay, she finally landed, she's with Juan, like he's a real person, like, okay, like this sounds like a good trip. Blanca was sending them a bunch of videos of her at the beach, of everything that they were touring, and she was also sending them videos of herself, so it honestly seemed like Blanca was having an amazing time in Peru. She was in constant communication with her family, specifically with her niece, Carla. Her and Carla had such an incredibly close relationship, so Carla was like constantly messaging her aunt, asking her, you know, hey, what's going on? How's this new boyfriend? How's Peru? Like, how is this trip? Everyone was just so curious as to what Blanca was doing in Peru and if this was actually like the right decision for her to make and you know at first it truly seemed like 
this was the happiest that Blanca had ever been. One of her friends named Mercedes spoke out and said that Blanca had told her that she was very happy, that she felt good about this, that she felt good about being there, and that she was so happy to be near the ocean because she just loved being near the water. Blanca arrived in Peru in July, and all of July, August, September, and October were going pretty well. When at this point, she had been there for a couple of months, and she had pretty much like established her life in Peru. However, on November 7th, 2022, everything would change. That morning, Blanca had texted her niece, Carla, letting her know that everything was going well, that her relationship with Juan was moving along, and that she was just having the greatest time ever in Peru. Carla was so happy to see this message from her aunt, but the next day on November 8th, Blanca never got in contact with her family. She stopped responding to Carla. She stopped responding to her sisters. She literally stopped responding to everyone. This is when her family and friends just knew that something was wrong because this entire trip, she had been in constant communication with everybody, like sending them good morning selfies, sending them videos of like her view. But then all of a sudden today, she's just completely MIA and completely quiet. They just knew that something was wrong and they weren't going to waste any more time. So Carla got to work and immediately began looking for her aunt. The only other person that they could think of to reach out to was her boyfriend Juan. I mean, that's literally the only person that Blanca knew in Peru and the person that she was supposed to be with. So Carla was able to find Juan on Facebook and she messaged him saying, quote, Hi Juan, hope you're doing well. I have a big favor to ask. My aunt has been MIA since Sunday and my family is worried. Do you think you could tell her to please communicate with us? Is she okay? Juan replied a couple of minutes later saying, quote, Hi, the truth is I don't know anything since a few days ago. It was mutually decided that she would leave and, well, in just a few words, she got bored of me. She went to Lima to look for a ticket to go back to Mexico and that's where my role in this ended. I hope everything goes well for her. I don't know anything else in regards to this. I say this with a lot of sadness. Take care and again, I hope she makes it safe back to Mexico. I'm sure her chip stopped working or her battery died. Talk to you soon, Carla. I know that message is just insane. So when Carla sees this, she replies and says, what day did she go to Lima? And that's when Juan responded with the screenshot between a conversation with him and Blanca. It showed that on November 7th, Juan had messaged her saying, quote, Hi, I hope your trip to Lima goes well. I will miss you, but I couldn't keep you longer. If you're stuck on Metro 28, be careful because there's a lot of theft. And then supposedly Blanca replied saying, quote, You too. With like a little like giraffe sticker. This conversation is just crazy. And something about this conversation with Juan just made Carla feel so uneasy. Easy. She just knew that there was no way that her aunt would suddenly leave and not tell anybody, especially because he was like, oh, she went to Lima to look for a ticket to Mexico. Carla was like, what? Like, if Blanca really was doing that, she would have messaged us to let us know that she was going back to Mexico, that things didn't work out. You know, can someone help me with the flight? They just knew that there was no way that she would have left and not spoken with anybody. Members of Blanca's family continued to message him to ask him, you know, what is going on? Where is Blanca? And this is when he started to get upset. He started to feel like they were, like, bombarding him, that they were annoying him. And in one of the voice messages that he sent, he even said, quote, I don't know where your aunt is. You have ruined my life. And the reason he said, you have ruined my life, is because Carla, as well as other members of Blanca's family and her friends, had taken to social media to ask for help to look for Blanca. Carla even went on Twitter and she shared the screenshots of the conversations that she had with Juan and was like, listen, everybody, this man is the last person to have been with my aunt and he's not being honest. Like, please help us find her. So at this point, his face was all over social media and Carla and other family members were getting in contact with the news and Mexico and with the news in Peru to spread awareness on Blanca's disappearance. I mean, no one had been able to get in contact with Blanca since November 7th. So the family was just starting to get worried. So they actually contacted the Mexican embassy in Peru and asked them to help. Garela even took to Twitter and said, quote, I never thought I would be in this situation, but today I'm asking for your support to spread this post and find one of the most loved and important people of my life. My aunt Blanca Olivia Arellano Gutierrez disappeared on Monday, November 
November 7th in Peru. We fear for her life. This was just such a serious situation, and the fact that Juan was getting all annoyed at the family for wondering where their aunt was is very telling, when literally the only reason that she was in Peru was because of him. So the news started picking up on this, and of course, so did the police department in Peru. Officers actually called Juan to come down to the police station to answer questions about Blanca's disappearance. And according to them, he was like very evasive towards certain questions. He just seemed like really quiet, and I was watching interviews with him, and this guy is just like so like creepy. He's just very calm and he's just like very serious and just like looks at you directly in the eye and I just feel like it's really like eerie. So anyways, he goes down to the police station for questioning and he tells police that he had nothing to do with her disappearance and then at one point he even claimed that he didn't even know who Blanca was and that he was never dating her. Out of the 73 questions that detectives asked him, he remained silent in 33. He also told police that he wasn't even in Huacho the day after Blanca's disappearance. He claims that he was actually in Lima during that time. However, Detectives ended up finding surveillance footage from a local store in Guacho that actually captured Juan on camera on November 7th buying a bottle of bleach. Yeah, so November 7th is the last day that anyone had ever heard from Blanca. So this guy is saying that he wasn't even in Guacho that day and that he was all the way somewhere else, yet there's literally footage of him buying bleach the day Blanca disappeared. Why did he need bleach? Juan was honestly the number one suspect in the eyes of the police and in the eyes of Blanca's family. Her family continued to message him and post him on social media and at one point he got so upset that he actually put this on his Facebook saying quote I wasn't her boyfriend she had no place to live and the only thing I did was help her and give her money every once in a while so she would be able to eat she was in a bad mental state and probably confused things her niece can't be posting my photos online as if I'm a criminal I'm not hiding from anyone because I didn't do anything bad he also added that he had no idea why Blanca even traveled to Peru because again Again, he's denying that they had any type of relationship. So he says that when Blanca arrived in Lima in July, that she literally had no money. So that's why she traveled to Huacho because she needed to find money to go back to Mexico and that her family was refusing to help her. So Juan, being the kind person that he is, says that he decided to help her out and offered his apartment to her while she got back on her feet. Now, he says that he would only be at his apartment twice a week because he was really busy with medical school. So five days out of the week, he would be gone and Blanca would stay at his apartment. Then when he would come back twice a week, he claims that Blanca would not stay at the apartment and that she would either go stay at a hostel or a hotel. He even says that he offered to pay her for the hotels and these hostels. So, you know, he was basically trying to make it seem like he was like a kind guy that was helping out this woman that had no money and that was like stuck here in Peru. And he was making himself seem like this like great guy. He's saying all this even though the family is like, huh? Like, he is such a liar because that's not the case at all. Blanca was having an online relationship with this man. She only traveled to Peru to go live with him and be with him. He agreed to this plan. So the fact that he was trying to act like Blanca was like a crazy person that came to Peru with no money and was like begging is insane. While the investigation into Blanca's disappearance continued, on November 9th, a terrible discovery was made. This is just two days after Blanca was last heard of. That day, Day, some fishermen at a port in Huacho saw that something had come ashore. They thought it was like maybe like an animal part or maybe like some garbage or just like something random. So one of the fishermen was like, I'm going to get closer to it to see what it is. And when they got a closer look at it, that's when they realized that this was a woman's head. They, of course, immediately freaked out and they called the police to come investigate. Police and investigators arrived at this port to begin investigating the scene. And hours later, they actually ended up finding an arm and a hand with the finger still intact. The next day, on November 10th, they ended up finding the torso of this woman, and when they looked inside her torso, they found that she had no organs. It's just absolutely horrific, and I can't imagine how traumatized the fishermen, the police officers, like everybody that had to see this and come across these body parts, it's just absolutely traumatizing. Now, police did suspect that maybe these body parts belonged to Blanca, just because they were now aware of her disappearance, but the woman's head was like unidentifiable. Like who knows how long it had been in the water? Who knows what this person had done to it? So there really was no way to identify the remains through the head. However, 
One of the fingers found on the hand had a silver ring on it. Well, Blanca's family says that she would always wear that specific silver ring. There's actually a photo of her with the ring on. And when detectives looked at the photo and looked at the ring that they had found, they determined that this ring did belong to Blanca, which meant that the body parts that they had found at the beach were Blanca. Upon further investigating, they also discovered that whoever had done this to Blanca had taken off her fingerprints. The person that did this probably thought that if they took off her fingerprints and like maybe they also did something to her face, that police would never be able to identify this person. But as I mentioned, you know, the ring was on her finger. So that did help police identify her as Blanca. But on top of that, Blanca had a specific mole on her back. So detectives looked at the torso and they found that exact same mole. When the public heard the news of the body parts being found, they were just completely outraged. The news in Peru actually said that this was the worst femicide case that they had ever heard of to that date. It's just horrible. I mean, this woman traveled to be with the love of her life, to find love and be happy. And now her body was just all cut up and washed ashore. When Blanca's family heard the news about this and heard that it was confirmed to be Blanca, Carla went to Twitter and wrote, quote, We believe in Peruvian laws and we fully trust the authorities to make it happen as they have done an impeccable job so far. It's time to raise your voice and ask for hashtag justicia para Blanca. I believe on November 11th, some of Blanca's family members had arrived to Peru and they said that they were not going to leave until their loved one got justice. There was a lot of protests held. There was a lot of marches, news interviews done. The family just wanted to spread as much awareness as possible on this case and to make sure that it actually got solved and that justice was served. Again, the number one suspect was Juan Pablo. On November 15th, police entered Juan's apartment and they ended up finding traces of blood in the bathroom and on his mattress. They also found some cleaning supplies. They found women's clothing. They found suitcases that belonged to women that had tags from Mexico. They even found a Mexican flag, women's hair, and they also found some men's clothing that had Juan's initials on it. The head of the Department of Criminal Investigation of Guacho, Elvis Valverde, spoke out and said that this evidence really indicates that Juan most likely had something to do with Blanca's disappearance. I mean, all of her stuff was still at his apartment. There was also blood found as well as cleaning supplies. I mean, you put all of that together and it really seems like Juan killed her. While police were searching the apartment, one of his neighbors came out and said that they had sold Juan eight black garbage bags on November 7th. The neighbor also added that she sold him some other stuff and that it seemed like he was just like in a very big rush to buy the supplies. And again, November 7th is the last day that anyone ever heard from Blanca. Other neighbors also spoke out and said that they saw Juan bringing black bags into a warehouse and that he was just acting very nervous as if he didn't want people to see what he was doing. So, you know, at this point, there's just a lot of evidence indicating that Juan is the one that did this. On November 17th, a warrant was issued for his arrest and he was actually found in an apartment that he was hiding in. So this wasn't the apartment that police had searched earlier. I'm not sure how they found him in this apartment. Regardless, police found him in this apartment. They stormed in and they actually found him hiding in the bathroom. Police immediately grabbed him. They checked his tattoos to make sure that this was him and not his twin brother. And they confirmed that this was actually Juan. And then they arrested him on charges of human organ trafficking and for the murder of Blanca. What's shocking is that that when Juan was arrested, he wasn't alone. He was actually found with a 26-year-old woman who we will just refer to as Lola. Police asked Lola, who are you? And that's when she says that she is actually Juan's girlfriend and that they have been dating for a month. She goes on to explain that they met on an online dating app and that she never even knew who Blanca was, like she didn't meet her in person. However, she started hearing about Blanca because of the news and about everything that was going on with Juan. So she asked Juan, you know, who is Blanca and what is happening with her? And that's when Juan explained to her that she was just a friend from Mexico who, who he would lend a hand to every once in a while. Now, police don't really know if they're telling the truth about when they started dating or if they had been dating longer than just like a month. Either way, if I was this girl, I would be freaking out if I had just found out that the guy that I had been dating for the past month was now accused of killing his ex-girlfriend and taking out her organs. That is just crazy. Police also stated that Juan was just acting really weird during his arrest and that he was just lying about a lot of stuff. So for example, they ended up finding this backpack that had a lot of cash in it. So police 
asked Juan, is this yours? And he said, no, that it belonged to Lola. But as soon as Lola heard this from a distance, she immediately shouted back and said, no, that's his backpack. Which again, he's just lying about simple things. So what else could he be lying about? He was actually interviewed after this arrest. And this interview is just like, oh my God, it's so chilling because again, he's just so quiet and calm while speaking. If you guys follow me on Instagram or if you guys saw this on my YouTube shorts, then you saw this clip earlier like yesterday. But he was just sitting down, you know, in handcuffs and the reporter is like, well, blood was found in your room. Why is that? And Juan says... I don't know. When I arrived to Huacho, I found my room a mess. From there, I saw on the news that they did a luminal test, among other things, in my room. I want to clarify everything. Then the reporter asked him, did you love Olivia? Which again is Blanca's middle name. And he replied with, no, we were just virtual friends. Like, for example, the reporter would be like, well, they've only found certain parts of Blanca where the rest of her remains. And he would just simply reply with, I don't know, sir. Every single thing that the reporter would ask him, he would just say, I don't know, sir. I don't know, sir. So there really wasn't that much like helpful information that came out of that interview. A few days after his arrest on November 22nd, he was sentenced to nine months in preventative prison while his trial was pending. And while he was in preventative prison, he kept complaining about his living conditions. He said that he wasn't used to sharing a bathroom with other people, that he wasn't used to not showering whenever he wanted to, and that sometimes he had to sleep on the floor because there was just like too many people in one cell. So he was just complaining about everything and everyone was like, bro, you're literally complaining about not showering when you're being accused of killing a woman and trafficking her organs. Like there are bigger things to worry about than you showering. When his trial finally began, he defended himself by saying that the stains found on his mattress could have been from someone else. He said that he bought this mattress from another person, so maybe those stains were already there and he just never noticed. He also added that he would let Blanca use his apartment while he was gone studying. So maybe she had brought like other people into his apartment while he was gone and one of those people are the ones that killed her. He was just very adamant that he had nothing to do with this, that he really wasn't dating Blanca and that he had truly no idea what had happened to her. As for the prosecution side, they honestly had a lot of evidence against Juan. As I mentioned numerous times throughout the video, he was a medical student. So he would often post videos on Facebook and on TikTok sharing medical advice, medical information, you know, stuff like that. So he was very active on TikTok and the prosecution discovered that shortly after Blanca's disappearance, Juan Pablo had been posting videos on TikTok allegedly showing him dissecting body parts, including a pancreas and a brain. So with that, the prosecution was kind of hinting at the fact that maybe those body parts that he was dissecting were Blanca's. According to court documents, the prosecution states that while Blanca Blanca was in Huacho with Juan Pablo, he had met another woman, fallen in love, and then began dating her. Which again, we're not sure if that's actually Lola or if it was like another woman. The court documents didn't specify if he met this person online or if they were like meeting in person. However, this new relationship did cause problems between him and Blanca. I guess he was like frustrated at the fact that Blanca had moved to Peru for him, that she was living in his apartment and, you know, you know, he basically just wanted to stop dating Blanca and date this new woman. Because Blanca had pretty much like left her entire life to go be with this man, he felt like Blanca probably wouldn't accept this relationship ending, which is then what led him to form a plan to get rid of Blanca. So the day of Blanca's death, Juan had traveled from Lima to Huacho and on the way there, he disconnected the GPS on his phone and on Blanca's phone. And then at night is when he committed this terrible crime. It's just hor I don't get like why he thought this was the only option. Like he could have just said, hey, this isn't working out. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry that you moved here for me. Like, let me help you get back home, but like, I don't want to date you anymore. That would have been the simplest thing to do. I don't know why he thought killing her, dismembering her, and taking out her organs was like the better option. A lot of people wonder if maybe Juan had planned this the entire time. Like maybe he had spoken to Blanca online. He had kind of just like manipulated her into thinking that they were in love, manipulated her into coming to Peru and... It wasn't because he actually loved her, it's because he actually wanted to harvest her organs and 
dissect them on TikTok or just like do something weird with it. You know, a lot of people think, you know, because he was a medical student, like maybe he was just like a really weird, curious medical student that just wanted to like dissect organs on his own and was just like an evil doctor type of thing. I just truly don't understand why he did this, why he felt like he had the right to take Blanca's life away. It's just absolutely heartbroken. I mean, he could have just let her go if it really was because he wanted to date this other woman. However, if it was because he was just like a weirdo that was like obsessed with like medical stuff and like was obsessed with like body parts and just like was curious and that's like a whole different thing. It's just terrible. And in the end, Juan Pablo was sentenced to 35 years in prison in September of 2023. 35 years, which I don't even understand like how this is an actual sentencing because this guy literally killed a woman dismembered her, took out her organs, yet he's only getting 35 years. He's also required to pay a civil reparation to Blanca's family, and to this day, he still claims that he is innocent and that his life has been ruined because of the case. Detectives actually found a suicide that he had left behind because he intended to take his own life. In this letter, he stated that he will never recover from this, that his life has been ruined, that his family's life has been ruined, that his reputation is done with, and that he didn't do this, but that he feels like he will never be able to prove his innocence. In one statement he made, he stated, quote, please, the only thing I ask for to give peace to the family and to Blanca is that justice is served and that you find the true killer. As as for Blanca's family, they were in Peru from the 12th of February 2023 to the 19th of February, waiting to be able to take Blanca's remains back to Mexico. The reason it took so long for them to get her remains is because they were still processing everything, you know, processing the DNA, the evidence. So it just took a long time for them to finally fly her back to Mexico. Her sister Alejandra spoke out and said that she just never imagined that this would happen to her sister, that this was supposed to be a simple trip to go visit her boyfriend friend and that it ended in such a horrific way. She states that she doesn't really recommend people dating online, that it's just very scary and a very dangerous thing to do, and she just asks people to take care of themselves and be safe. The family really just doesn't want people to blame Blanca for what happened, they want people to understand that it's not a crime to travel, it's not a crime to meet someone online, it's not a crime to fall in love. However, taking someone's life that is a crime. That should be the focus on this case. You know, Blanca shouldn't be blamed for what happened to her because she's not the one that did something so terrible and so incredibly cruel. Juan did. He is the one that took her life. As for Blanca's niece, Carla, of course, she was greatly affected by this and she spoke out and said that her aunt was just a very kind and warm person, full of light. She was intelligent, dedicated, and loving. And that is how Blanca should be remembered. My thoughts and prayers go out to Blanca's family. This is just such an incredibly cruel and unfair thing that happened to this wonderful and beautiful woman who's just going out there to find love and start this new chapter of her life. But all right, you guys, that is pretty much all the information I have for today's video. I know it was such an intense case to listen to and just like so just crazy and graphic. It honestly scared me. I was like, why did this have to happen? Like what a psycho. Like especially because like I'm saying, if if he did do all of this because he wanted to date someone new and just didn't know like what to do with Blanca, that makes me even more angry and more scared because it's like could have just broken up with her and bought her a flight back to Mexico. Like, that was a simple solution. I don't know. I would definitely love to know what you guys think about this down below. Like, it's just insane. I really appreciate you guys being here and taking the time to listen to what happened to Blanca. If there's ever any cases that you would like me to cover, make sure to leave me a comment down below so I can add it to my list. As I mentioned, I will be a little bit MIA because of my procedure that I have to get done. So I will keep you guys posted on the community tab and on Instagram with any updates and like when I'll be back, etc. So yeah, I think I'm having a video posted on Thursday though. So I'll see you guys on Thursday. And yeah, thank you guys again so much for being here. Bye guys. Bye.